Hi everyone, it's Michael. <clears throat> so I have a famous theorem for you today called Sheva's Theorem. Um, it's fairly often used in Olympiad geometry problems. Um, I feel like they, I don't think they teach this theorem in the U.S. in geometry classes, and I feel like they should because it's kind of important. Um, but I think I've heard that they teach it in other countries. Um, so it's called Sheva's Theorem. Although it was actually discovered before Cheva. So there was um, an Arab king, Al Mutamad Bila, and he was king from around the year 1081 AD to 1085. And he uh, first discovered this theorem and he published it in a book called The Book of Perfection. So he had a bunch of theorems in geometry, and he thought this was so great that he put it in his book of perfection. And then about 600 years later, in 1678, um, the Italian mathematician Giovanni Ceva um, published it. Um, and we don't know whether Ceva already knew about the first guy's work or whether he rediscovered it on his own. Um, but Anyways, we, for, for whatever reason, we name it after um, the Italian mathematician Giovanni Ceva instead of the guy who originally discovered it. Not sure why, but uh, that's how it is. So the theorem is, and, and I'm going to give two proofs of it. Um, P is any point inside a triangle ABC. And then you draw the three Chevians through point P to the opposite side. So AP beats, meets BC at D, BP meets AC at E, and CP meets AB at F. So it's a very symmetrical um, arrangement. And we want to show that BD over DC times CE over EA times AF over FB equals 1. Okay. So here's for the first proof. Um, I feel like the second proof is actually maybe easier to just see at a glance, although the first proof might be one that you might be more likely to discover on your own, uh, but that's sort of just my opinion. Um, so for the first proof, we draw a parallel through point A to the side BC, and then we extend CF and BE, and we let it meet that parallel at G and H. All right, so now I'm going to delete some of the, the excess. Okay, so there's a lot of similar triangles here um, because we have two parallel lines. And whenever you have two parallel lines and you have two lines cutting those two parallel lines, it, it always forms two um, similar triangles. So, for example, the first one, uh, triangle BPD is, is similar to triangle HPA. So we have BH and AD both cutting those two parallel lines, so it forms two similar triangles. And this is easy to see. Um, they have to have all three angles equal. So, first of all, they have to have these two angles equal as their vertical angles, so APH and BPD. But then by uh, alternate interior angles, uh, angle HAP and angle PDB have to be equal, and the same with the other pair of angles. So, so uh, BPD is similar to HPA, and therefore uh, we have the following proportion. Uh, BD over DP is PA over AH. And then we, we can do the same thing with um, triangle CPD. So, so uh, CPD has to be similar to GPA for the same reason as before. So we have the proportion CD over DP is AG over AP. Okay. Um, and we can divide these two proportions because they both um, have DP and AP in the denom denominators. Um, so when we divide the two, we get BD over CD is equal to AH over AG. And so the whole reason I did that is because 
BD over CD gives us the first of the three fractions in this top equation. So what's interesting is to get BD over CD, I had to use two fractions um, but and, and take a ratio, but for the other fractions, I'll only need one equation. So um, the next, we want to find CE over EA. Um, but those are corresponding segments of these two tr similar triangles, BCE and EAH. So we have CEB is similar to AEH, and therefore CE over EA is BC over AH. And similarly, um, BFC is similar to AFG. And so we have AF over FB equals AG over BC. So we have all three fractions that we want. Um, we have BD over CD in this equation, and then CE over EA, and AF over FB. So we can multiply these three equations to get this side, but when we multiply the three, everything on the right-hand side cancels, which is pretty cool. So the AH cancels, the BC cancels, and the AG cancels, and we're left with just one which is very cool. I think, I think it's very cool. So I'm not sure if this is the proof that um, all Mutama and Bila had, it, and I probably didn't pronounce it correctly, but proof that he had or the proof that Giovanni Cheva had, but it is a proof of Cheva's theorem. Um, so yeah, I guess on the one hand, you might think this parallel line through A kind of came out of nowhere, but on the other hand, it's often good to draw a parallel like that to create lots of similar triangles. Um, so I guess it's not totally unmotivated. So now I will go into the second proof I have of Cheva's theorem. And this second proof, I would say, is probably more common uh, throughout textbooks um, and online. Um, so for this proof, we're, we're going to use areas. Um, so we're going to use the fact that if two triangles um, have the same height, then the ratio of their areas is the ratio of their bases. Um, so for example, um, if you look at triangle ABD a, and ACD, they both have the same height from point A. To, the, to, um, to their base, but one has um, base BD and the other has base DC. So since area is base times height divided by two, uh, the ratio of the areas of ABD and ACD has to be BD over DC since they have the same height. So that's exactly what this says here. And I've used these brackets to denote area. And I'm going to do that sort of in all my future videos. I, I feel like it's um, generally a very convenient notation. Um, so BD over DC is area of ABD over area of ACD. Now what we're going to try to do is, if, if you look at the triangle ABD first, we're going to try to scale it down to triangle ABP. So kind of like I said before, if you look at um, the, what happens to the area, so um, ABD and ABP have the same height, but from B this time. So the, the height from B to uh, either this base or this base is the same for both the smaller triangle ABP and the larger triangle ABD. So their areas, again, has to be the, the ratio of the bases. Um, so, um, and so the ratio of the area of ABP to ABD is AP over AD. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this fraction and I'm going to multiply both numerator and denominator by that factor, AP over AD. And the, the fraction as a whole has to stay the same when I do it. Because I'm, if you just multiply numerator and denominator by the same thing, the fraction stays the same. But then ABD times AP over AD, 
like I said before, that has to be the area of ABP. Um, so this, this smaller triangle, and by the same logic, uh, area of ACD times AP over AD has to be the area of ACP. Um, so now we have BD over DC is equal to this fraction. And this is starting to look very symmetric and very convenient. Um, so we can do the same thing that we did with BD over DC, this fraction. We can do the same thing for CE over EA and AF over FB. So when you do that, you get these ratios. Um, but notice that in all three of the, the ratios on the right-hand side, it uses the same three triangles, ABP, um, ACP, and BCP. So this gives us some sort of confidence that things will cancel out nicely. And indeed, when we multiply the three, um, on the left-hand side, we get the three fractions that we want. And on the right-hand side, everything cancels. ABP cancels, ACP cancels, and BCP cancels, and we get exactly what we want. The product of the three fractions is one. So I hope you all enjoy this video. If you already knew Cheva's theorem, maybe you got insight into another proof of it. Um, and if you uh, want to see more videos like that, um, please uh, remember to subscribe to my channel. Um, so thanks so much, everyone. Have a good day.